Okay, let's talk about long-term potentiation, LTP. This is a process very important in memory. We've discussed it in class, but it can be a little confusing, and uh, that's because it's actually quite complicated. Now, fortunately, we can break it down into very small steps, and I think when you do it that way, then it's not super difficult. You, you can do it. It's just you just have to wrap your head around it. So that's what we're going to do together. So the process here is this is what I want you to bear in mind. I'm going to draw just two neurons with two receptors. In reality, there's many more neurons. There's many more receptors involved. But we keep it simple, right? Two neurons, two receptors. And we're going to look at a specific form of long-term potentiation that deals with glutamate because we understand that form of LT LTP best. Glutamate, generally excitatory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system, uh, as opposed to, say, GABA, which is generally inhibitory. Now, understand what's going on. That usually, you're not really trying to learn something, you're not really forming a memory, you're just doing things, you know, you're just reading something, whatever, you're not trying to actively remember it. Well, then there will be neural activity, but when you're trying to learn something, there's going to be really high-frequency neural activity, a lot of neural firing. And that's what we're interested in right now. Interested in right now. So let's just, let's just try and draw something, because I think when I draw it step by step, if you follow along, it'll make sense to you. Okay? So what do we have? Just see how much space I have. Here we have... It's a diagram, okay? Shut up. So, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Pre synaptic neuron, pre sending, right? Pre synaptic. Here's going to be the synapse. I'm going to leave some space. Here we have a dendrite, post synaptic, right? Receiving neuron. Now, what are the main characters in this play? First of all, glutamate. Glutamate, you will find that presynaptically in vesicles, right? Then we have two types of receptors for glutamate. Now, if you find that difficult, I understand. Look at it this way. Glutamate is a neurotransmitter. And think of a neurotransmitter as a key. You put a key in a lock, you turn it, something happens. A door opens, a cupboard opens, your car opens, whatever. Back in the day, you had to open cars that way. Never mind. And so that's what a key does in a lock. Now, it turns out that glutamate fits at least two different locks. And those are two different kinds of receptors. What makes them different? Well, if you inject someone with a little bit of glucose and you attach a chemical to that, then it turns out that one type of chemical binds to one type of glutamate receptor, but not to another, and another chemical binds to that other receptor, but not to the first one. That's what makes the locks different, okay? That's what makes the neurotransmitter receptors different. Now, we're going to be talking about two of them, okay? There is AMPA, which is just an abbreviation for a very long chemical name. That's one type of receptor because the chemical AMPA binds to that receptor. And I'm going to draw one right here. AMPA. Again, in reality, many more AMPA receptors, but we're just going to pretend there's only one, just to keep things simple, okay? AMPA receptor, what is a receptor? A protein. Proteins can have different shapes, and as a result, you can have AMPA, you can have other receptors, and one of those other receptors happens to be called NMDA. Is that the same as MDMA? No. MDMA is ecstasy, that's a recreational drug, this is a different type of chemical. NMDA binds to the NMDA receptor, AMPA binds to the AMPA receptor, but AMPA does not bind to the NMDA receptor. These are just chemicals. Remember that you inject someone with is not a neurotransmitter. It just binds to that specific type of trans uh, sorry, that specific type of receptor. So here we have an NMDA receptor. And an NMDA receptor is a little special. Why is it special? Well, it has an ion pore just like the AMPA receptor. What does that mean? It means that protein is built in such a way, and I'm simplifying a little bit, that it has something in the middle that looks like this. That's an ion pore. Right now it's closed, but it can change shape. It can do that. And when it does that, the ion pore opens, ions can flow in, or ions can flow outside of the cell. That's all. Right? Into or out of the cell. Simple. 
The Ampel receptors always work. They always work. Very simple. Glutamate binds to them, we'll get to that. They always work. But NMDA receptors don't always work. Reason, that little orange ball I drew there, that little orange ball is something special. It's an ion. Oops, and I'm going to use black. A black marker here to just put in the names of the ions I'm talking about. That thing is magnesium, Mg2+, cation, positively charged ion. That's important. What does this mean? Well, this means that at some point there's going to be exocytosis. That was just the different, uh, sorry, the difficult word to express that at some point this sending cell is going to fire an action potential, it's going to go from the axon hillock down the axon to the axon terminal like we talked about. And remember at the end of the axon terminal, neurotransmitter is released. And the neurotransmitter off service here was glutamate. Glutamate released into the synaptic cleft. Remember, bag of chips, pop, smack it, pops, chips fly out. That's what happens in exocytosis. Now here's the thing. If glutamate binds to the binding sites on an ampi receptor, the ion pore opens, ions flow in. What ions? Sodium. And that's relevant, right? Sodium flows in. What happens when sodium flows in? You know that. What happens? Depolarization, right? Depolarization. This neuron, this receiving neuron, is going to depolarize a bit. Remember something like minus 70, minus 75 millivolts, right? Resting potential. That voltage is going to go up. Still going to be negative, maybe until it hits a specific threshold, right? And then this cell is going to fire its own action potential. But this is a normal circumstance. You're not trying to remember anything. You're not forming a new memory. You just say reading a book or something. Nothing particular happens. There's going to be a bit of firing back and forth. Okay? But that's it. I'll come back to what happens when you try to learn something. But under these circumstances, normal circumstances, not learning, glutamate, it can also bind to the binding sites of an NMDA receptor. But well, what happens there? Nothing. Because the ion pore is blocked by a plug, magnesium plug. Think of a bathtub. You have water in it and there's a drain, but as long as the plug is in the drain, the water is not going to flow into the drain. It's going to stay in the bathtub. So in this case, the glutamate cannot get into this receiving postsynaptic cell. It's not possible. Until, until there's a lot of firing, pow, 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 that's going, going down. Why? Because you're doing something. You're trying to learn something. Say, you're going to learn about long-term potentiation. Do you realize how meta this is? Like learning about this while we're learning about this. Whoa! I know. So, what happens then with this massive, rapid firing? Boom, 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 action potentials. High rate. What happens? This cell, the receiving cell, is going to depolarize more and more and more. I'm just symbolizing this with this redness, okay? It's getting very depolarized. Where is it going? From about minus 17 millivolts, that's at rest, to about minus 35 millivolts. And at minus 35 millivolts, magic happens. What kind of magic? The plug is dislodged. This magnesium plug, I'm going to be very careful here. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm actually erasing everything but the plug. Okay, I'm going to have to redraw a little bit there, but that's okay. Here we have our NMDA receptor and that magnesium plug is out, pops out. And then, what happens? Well, now, glutamate binding to the NMDA receptor, ion pore opens. What ions flow in? Well, interestingly enough, you might think 
more sodium, but it's not that. This is an ion pore for a different type of ion, calcium. Okay? Calcium. Calcium. And when calcium flows in, something interesting happens. It happens in there, in the receiving neuron. That calcium basically activates a bunch of chemicals called protein kinases. You don't have to know that for the test. Protein kinases. And these protein kinases, they do stuff. What kind of stuff? Well, first part, okay? This is what I want you to remember. The three things that happen during LTP. First thing. What's a receptor? Basically just a protein, okay? And your neurons make proteins all the time. That's part of what they do. It's their job description. And this neuron has already been making a couple of extra AMPA receptors. Just a protein. Like, you know, this may come in useful at some point. These protein kinases tell those receptors to migrate up and to be studded into the postsynaptic membrane. So, goes here, goes here. Ooh, now we have more AMPA receptors on site, okay? This is part of the long-term connection of that synapse changing as you are learning something, okay? So that's the first step. Step one, more AMPA receptors. Not only do the protein kinases tell the already available AMPA receptors to migrate up, the protein kinases also tell this cell to make more AMPA receptors. So the first step, more AMPA receptors. Second step, these AMPA receptors are made more sensitive. So what is there is going to be made more sensitive. That means that the ion pore becomes more sensitive to sodium and to potassium. Okay. Now more sodium can rush in because glutamate is now binding to the other sites as well, right? Because now we also have one here, we have one here, we have one here, we have one there. And the result is that more sodium is going to rush into the cell. And the result of that is, of course, more depolarization, right? More sodium coming in, uh, depolarization, cation, positively charged ion, more AMPA receptors studying the membrane. This is called trafficking, receptor trafficking. So more AMPA receptors available. The AMPA receptors that are there are made more sensitive. And then there's the third process. The third process, I probably should have taken another color of marker. The third process, I'll just make it black, is that specific, this is not pointing there, it's just a general thing, specific retrograde transmitters are activated. Like what? Nitric oxide and um, carbon monoxide. These are gases. There are a couple other ones. So, nitric oxide, carbon monoxide. They float from the postsynaptic to the presynaptic membrane. And what do they tell the presynaptic cell? Release more glutamate. That's what happens, all right? More AMPA receptors, more sensitive AMPA receptors, more glutamate released. You can see how this process feeds into itself, right? More glutamate, more depolarization because more sodium rushes in, etc., etc., etc. Structural changes, presynapt sorry, presynaptically and postsynaptically, presynaptically, more glutamate released, postsynaptically, more receptor trafficking, more sensitive AMPA receptors, not N NMDA, okay? Not NMDA. You don't put in more of those. You don't make those more sensitive. It's an, it, this is an AMPA story only. And that's it. This happens on a larger scale, happens to many neurons, many receptors, and as a result, that is part of the learning process. There are other processes, but this is part of it. The result, you learn something, you form those pathways in your brain, and you have learned something, you've created a memory trace, and this is one of the important things that lies at the basis of that. That's all. Long-term potentiation, LTP, broken down step by step. You can do it. 
Let me know if there's any other questions.